Hi, my name is Steve Hoare of Gaming Intelligence. Yesterday I sat down with Pontus Lindwall, the Chief Executive of Betson Group, to talk about the intertwined histories of the company he founded, NetEnt, the company he manages, Betson, the company his father founded, Cherry, and the company that's about to buy NetEnt, Evolution Gaming. It's a great story. Obviously my father was in, uh, in, in Cherry, one of the four founders. So I kind of grew up with, with uh, gaming. I studied technology at the university and uh, I didn't, you know, aim for working within gambling. But when I left uh, university, it happened that I ended up in Sherry for a short while. So I, I worked within gambling for a while. Then internet started to happen and I was really interested in that because uh, being a technician I understood that the uh, internet could uh, be a fantastic vehicle for uh, a lot of different e-commerce businesses and when I thought about it I kind of came to the conclusion that it's good to have a service which can be delivered without physical goods and then gaming you know having worked within gambling in Sherry came to my mind and I founded NetEnt. So that's uh, how I came into it. I went to the board, which I knew personally from my time in Sherry, and I said, hey, look, I want to do this and I need financing. And I want to bring in Shinevik, which is a big investment company. And they had been breaking a few monopolies before because this was a very tightly regulated market. They have been active in breaking the telephone monopoly and the TV monopoly. So I thought they had a good background, you know, to go internet gaming from abroad. And we formed this like three party thing around net and being Sherry, myself and Shinevik and started from there. Am I right? It's 1996 that you, you started NetEnt, and and what what was the the vision for it then? Uh, my vision, uh, which didn't really end up on paper, but my whole idea, what I wanted to reach, was to create a company with 10, 15 people that was you know that that could live. If I could live on this as an outcome, that would be amazing. That that was the ambition. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it, 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 it was so hard, you know, to kind of you know paint up these big dreams when no one was hardly using internet at the time. So, so uh, I think I was a little bit humble in, with ambitions. I, I, it, I, I believed in it a lot from a technical standpoint, but then again, it was hard to predict how big this market uh, were going to be. But uh, yeah, uh, NetEnt started as a small project and once it became a little bit bigger, Sherry actually acquired NetEnt and, 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 and uh, NetEnt became a part of Sherry. And a few years later, uh, Shinevik exited Sherry and NetEnt was a 100% owned subsidiary. Uh, and the idea with NetEnt from the beginning was not to be a system supplier, but to operate internet gaming but there were no systems around so they built we built our own system and uh, 2005 we were quite big and we started to discuss to split up because we were uh, both operating our own sites and we were supplying uh, our technology to to other gaming sites as well on a b2b basis so we decided to split up um, and we also had Sherry doing their physical land-based gaming in the Can same group. Can I interrupt you one second there, Pond? Yeah. So in that period as well, Cherry acquired the Betson brand, right? In, in 2003, I think it was. Yeah, we did. We acquired it in 2003 and there was like some kind of build-up phase where they were still active and, and we had an option to, to buy out uh, the, the founders of Betson. Uh, in 2005, which we did. At least when they first came to us, which was 2002, it was more or less an idea on a paper and three guys. And we decided to finance it and, uh, and, and you know, if they could reach uh, only a part of their visions, it, it would be a good investment. Uh, this was Anders Holmgren, uh, Fredrik Sidfalk and Henrik Bergqvist. 
yeah. <clears throat> and they struggled really hard during those three years and did a very good job and 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 we acquired the company fully in 2005 and they left uh, not under she was still with us for a while and uh, it became our biggest consumer brand in in those years so uh, and then we decided that that should be our main vehicle going forward and we decided to change names you know uh, on on the whole sherry group from sherry to, to batson and then when that happened we had uh, the mother company and then we had the three units being netant as a system supplier batson online as the online operations and then sherry as the land based and, and we decided to split it in three pieces and give it out as share dividend to the shareholders so that's how it became three units they acquired Morton's brands and uh, that was kind of the starting point for a new era of their online business. Yeah, which of course were bets and <laughs> white labels, of course. Yeah, it was. And, and so you we, later we acquired them. <laughs> They were all bets on white labels and they were using mainly net and games. So, so there was some connections still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me about Morton. Now, he's obviously remained uh, with Cherry and on the board and chairman and involved in the buyout with, with you and Bridgepoint um, a year or two ago now. Um, what, what, what do you, what does, he's a big character, Morton. To tell, tell me about... I mean, when when did you first meet him? And... I met him a very long time ago. He was active in uh, land-based gaming in Norway and we uh, cooperated with Sherry, uh, uh, with his company in Norway. And, and I, I realized very quickly that he was, uh, as you say, a, a strong character. And then he, he knew a lot about gaming, uh, being a gambler himself in a way. He understood the mind of the player, uh, which was uh, which has helped, uh, of course, a lot in in creating a success on the online side. Um, so then we move on, yeah, and yes, the new 2013 Betson acquired those those brands, and and Morton stayed stayed with Cherry, um, and Cherry acquired a little company called Yggdrasil, which was of course launched by <laughs> Net former NetEnt. Um, yeah. Uh, Guy Frederick El- Elmquist. Yeah. Um, is there something um, culturally that unites the, these three companies? That yeah, I think culturally, I think uh, within this context of the old Sherry and Net and Batson and everything, we have managed to come across some great entrepreneurs, and we have managed to possibly attract some great entrepreneurs, which means that. It's been a dynamic journey in the way that that there's a lot that has been done. Fredrik Elmqvist, when he left NetEnt, he went out and created a company, you know, from nothing more or less. And he was supported by Sherry, quite a, a good move by Sherry to, to finance that. And, and it has become something which is... Uh, uh, a very nice uh, supplier today. So uh, I think over the years we have managed to come across a lot of interesting and strong entrepreneurs. And there is, regarding the culture, uh, a little bit of culture to believe in these kind of people and kind of support them and put them in in an environment where they have the ability to succeed and, and and later on harvest from that hopefully yeah. for myself at least I, I i you know i've become really attached to the company and culturally i think uh, the company's uh, i i'm a part of the company and the company is a part of me so that's uh, that's a very str- i have a strong connection and i think that goes for frederick uh, uh, and uh, morten too so bringing us right up to date of course you've now got Evolution acquiring NetEnt. Evolution has has evolved, obviously, in a, in a very separate path. But um, the founders Jens and, and Frederick Osterberg, do, do you do you know them? From I mean, do, you, do your paths cross? Yeah, they, they are like two of the guys which I didn't want to name, but who are on that list. They worked for NetEnt for a while. Uh, 
And, and these are two extremely strong entrepreneurs. They started uh, their company long time ago. It, it was called Live Gamble, if I remember correctly. And they were building that up and we were kind of testing their product a bit on, on the casino operated by, by us at the time. And then, you know, after, under the year 2001, when there was a really tough time for internet companies, they ran into financing problems and they didn't want to leave their you know project which they believed so much in but they couldn't get financing so they they came to work for netant for a while and, and kind of kept their you know investment going you know on, on the stove a little bit uh, while just waiting for better times and and then a year later or two years later they quit and went back to to their company and and, and uh, struggled on again and uh, it took them a number of years after that and, and then it really took off so 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 they are two people that has definitely come into this entrepreneurial era from the outside they were here for a while and then left and and managed a fantastic journey which is i mean unheard of i would say and so well okay so things come full circle with with their company acquiring net i mean they're not necessarily running it on a day-to-day basis now um that do you know martin carlison the the chief executive of evolution yeah i i know him i've met him many many times and of course being in this industry and uh, yeah we know each other um, he's again, an, uh, i think he has done a terrific job for evolution i mean it's about execution and being in the details and uh, it's uh, yeah, he's an impressive impressive engine i mean maybe we should go back to to the to the founders and talk about your father and Pierre Hamburg. I would say my father, he kind of departed from this industry before I came in. So his uh, his only advice was, uh, you know, uh, don't. He said, don't go to the gaming industry. It's too much under political uh, control. And now I understand what it means. <laughs> uh, but uh, and then there was Per Hamburg. He was really. Uh, one kind of mentor for me. So he was one of the supporters I had when I founded NetTent and, and I I needed, you know, funding. Whereas some other board members at the time said that that's not going to fly. It's only technology. It will cost us a lot. And, you know, so, so he was a supporter that could look forward with a technology, technology vision in a way. Uh, then I must mention John Vatin. He's, he was on the board uh, for Betson for a very long time and, and Nathan. And he, he was, from a business perspective, my mentor uh, and uh, still is, actually, because I, I contact him un- informally from time to time. And... Uh, He's a very skillful businessman, I would say. Great. great. And, and then I think, you know, it's, we have the Knutsson family, the Lundström family, the Kling family, and the Hamberg family, who has been around this group forever. And as shareholders, board members, and general supporters, I would say, and you know, I think when companies end up in uh, problems or when when there is tough times because that happens, then it's really good to have a supporting group of shareholders that just doesn't leave you, you know, alone. They stand behind you and they understand the business. And for that reason, they can hang in there and support both mentally and financially, if if need be. Yeah, and that's that. I mean, that factor is quite. I don't. I, would, I don't like to use the word unique, um, but quite unusual. I think in in this day and age, uh, maybe more so in maybe less so in Sweden. I don't know. No, I, I don't think it's very common here either that you have a group of 
families like that 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 sit very tight. Of course, there are other companies where you have such situations, but it it has been good for us. And I think you know, as a company, I think that is a good asset to have because some of the more that other capital that flies around the institutional capital capital that is more. You know that, that that tend to drop off when you run into problems or when the winds change. You know, suddenly it's not as popular to be a share owner of uh, a gaming company, and then that capital moves away. Whereas this family capital, it, it stays and it backs the company, so that's good. And and that helps a lot that they understand the business. They are not only finance people that put some money on the table and see a, a journey. They understand gambling genuinely, and, and that is probably why they have stuck to this group for such a long time.